So it has been storm after storm here in the Beehive State, something we have desperately needed coming out of an incredibly mild winter last year. Yeah, so with this series of storms comes the temptation to wonder, are we any closer to conquering the drought? Right now on KSL Plus. The really good news is we don't have any areas of exceptional drought in the state. In just the last few months. For the first time in almost a, about a year. We've seen a dramatic improvement in the state of the drought in Utah. Uh, I think a lot of people go, hey, now that we've got the water, things are good. The truth is, is that we need to take a look at droughts, water management, and everything else on a holistic point of view. DNR says it's likely all of the snow in the mountains. That's I'm Matt Rascone, and this week, my conversation with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Eubank. Conservation is part of our future, period. We talk about what these big winter storms mean for the drought, how many more of them we need to get out, and why we can't rely solely on what's falling from the sky. What was the state of Utah's drought heading into this winter? So the state of our drought heading into this winter was unbelievably critical. We had depleted all of our resources in the sense of water storage. The Great Salt Lake had hit a historic low. Lake Powell was headed for a historic low uh, in as much as they actually had to put in stop gaps to stop the outflow of water, or they were going to run the risk of losing power generation capability and all sorts of problems. So we were in a very, very dire position. Our water conservation efforts worked, got us through the summer, but we were not going to be able to do another year like 2020, 2021, and 2022. Uh, so really, it was about as critical of a, of a period as we've ever seen in the sense of we needed water and we needed it in a big way. Wow. Yeah, I remember going into it. I mean, there were actual numbers of, hey, yeah, we need at least, you know, this percentage of our normal year for snowpack in order to really make a difference. Yeah, we definitely needed to have a normal year. We'd gone so many years with being below normal that a normal year would have at least provided enough water to use the next year. So anything above a normal year, right, is just bonus to help us start to replenish. So that was kind of the, the, the goal was normal. Uh, the lofty goal would be anything above normal. And uh, when you start talking where we are today, uh, I think that was probably beyond uh, most of our wildest dreams in the sense of being where we are right now um, for the amount of water in the mountains, snow in the mountains, and the potential that it continues into the spring. It's a really good scenario to be in. Yeah, talk about that a little bit more. Um, what? Uh, how did we get to where we are today now? Uh, I'm going to use one word, well, two words, but one one concept. It's called atmospheric river. Um, and what that is, is, is it's a current of air that goes all around the earth. But when you tap into the moisture in that jet stream and you don't block it, or, or generally when storms come in from the Pacific, they have to navigate, you know, high pressures, low pressures, they move around. And when they do that, they change their location. And that can really impact what goes on. If it goes north, the, the higher... Latitude will actually take the moisture out. It's colder, and, and so we don't get the kind of storms. An atmospheric river, in essence, is just a river of water up in the atmosphere. That came in and hit the West in monster ways in December and in January. We've been seeing what we need this year, and it's so nice to see for once. So much so that we just got plastered. I mean, we're talking 80, 90, 100 inches in a week up in the cottonwoods super early and it stayed on the ground. And then we got really cold and we were able to preserve all that snow. And so that atmospheric river brought all that moisture from the Pacific and just dumped it into the Western states. And it caused problems. There was flooding and landslides and mudslides in California. And, you know, we even had some problems here in Utah early on. But uh, because of that atmospheric river, we were hitting 
near normal levels for the entire snow season in the month of January. So we were just so far ahead of the game so early, and that came because of all that moisture that just came right into Utah. It was a series of storms, but it was really impressive. Yeah, we even had uh, basements in our neighborhood flooding. I know that they had that in Draper and just a, a bigger amount of water than we're used to, I guess. Yeah, and again, it came in the form because it was so warm in the trajectory, right? We had a lot of valley rain. It wasn't, a, it, if you, we remember, December into January, it wasn't like we were having tons of valley snowstorms. They were rainstorms. They eventually went to the valley snow, but some of the biggest storms that we had, the majority of them came as valley rain and very heavy, wet mountain snow. So when we talk about uh, what we need in the mountains to really make a difference, we're talking about that snow, right? It's the, it's the actual snow pack, not the valley rain. That's right. Valley rain doesn't fill reservoirs. Mountain snow is what we need, and that's what's so critical to our water infrastructure. But even if we get snow, you know, as much snow as we did early on, even that could potentially not make a huge difference if it melts too early. Or how the, how do you how do you just explain that part? So we we hit the the annual average for snowfall in our mountains, snow and water. What's called snow water equivalent. It's the amount of water in the snow. And that's the critical number that we look at when we try to figure out how much water is coming into our system. So it's called snow water equivalent. We hit both the snow depth and the water equivalent, the annual average we hit in January. So if we were to just turn off the spigot, shut it all down in February, March, and April, we would have ended up with a normal snow season. Well, that doesn't help us recover anything. That helps us keep up with what we need. It, it gives us the water to use this year but it doesn't help make up for anything. So what you need is you need 150, 175 to 100% of normal through the months of February, March, and April. That's the real critical time. And then, like you said, you need to manage the snow melt. So you don't want that to melt off too quickly. You want to melt that off gradually and measured so that we can move it and get it into the reservoirs. We can then redistribute to lower reservoirs and valley reservoirs and kind of move that water around to really maximize the impacts of capturing all of that water. We want it to happen so quickly, don't we? Just to right. get out of it thinking, oh, you know, we can do it in a few weeks, right? Yeah, you Not walk that line between being optimistic and, right. and yet realistic. Yeah. The good news is, is we've got the snow, we've got the water. and you got Central snow. Utah, Southern Utah, still seeing snow today, even the Northern mountains are still seeing snow today. So this push, right, we kind of really, end of January, it kind of turned off. And the first part of February, first half of February, was kind of mediocre. The mountains got some, but it was kind of mediocre compared to what we had in January. But to finish February, it's like the hose got turned back on and we got hit really, really hard. And that again is going to jump those numbers back up. We're at about the 100, 150 to almost 200% for the snowpack across the state. And with our recent storm, we've jumped that up another 20%. So all of a sudden, it took the Wasatch from 150 up to 170. Took those areas in southern Utah that were at 180 all the way to 200. And some of those other basins that were 200% of normal, they're now at 220. So these kinds of storms really help, but they've got to keep coming. So I know we keep saying it sounds like we're greedy. We're not greedy. It's just the, the, the way it works, the law of averages, is it all averages out over time. If you turn it off, the time catches up and the water doesn't. And so all of a sudden you just average out. What you need it is you need time and storms to just keep going. The time moves on, the storms keep coming. And when you get to that date you measure, which is generally April 1st into May, that's when you go, all right, we've got enough water this year to not only replenish what we've been needing for the year, but to add, to build, to actually start to recover holistically from the drought that's been so many years in the making. Yeah. If you think back, what um, what year would you compare this to? I mean, how long ago did we have a year that was like this? Oh, goodness. That's a really good question. Um, you know, we've had years in the past. Um, it it uh, 83 comes to mind, 93 comes to mind, and that's when we had these big record snows in our mountains. Yeah. Um, some of the resorts, you know, Alta had the snowiest January ever on record for Alta. And that's saying something. That's Little Cottonwood Canyon that's experienced some pretty big snow years. So it's happened in the past. 
a lot of people are now starting to ask the question, which is funny and ironic to me, that we went from drought to now floods, right? Oh no, we got all this snow, are we gonna flood in the spring? And it's funny we say that, we have the capacity to store the water, but just like in 1983, if it gets too warm too fast, the waterways can't handle that much water. And so that's where you get flooding. Um, I don't think flooding is going to be a widespread issue in the spring. I think we've got enough capacity, storage, and management that we'll be able to you know, manage all that water coming down. Um, but it is funny that when you look at years past, the only ones you really have to compare it to are some really big snow years. And this is turning out to be one of those really big snow years. Yeah, you have to go back pretty far, it sounds like. To... Yeah, 20, 20, 30 years to capture that. Some some cases, almost 40. Are there are there numbers? You, you've mentioned uh, normal and you know, 150, 200% of that. What is the actual number for normal? So there is no state normal because there's all different basins that are being measured. So as I gave you that range, right, of 125% to 200%, that's what the different basins are currently at. Okay. Um, and so every storm that goes up and that goes down, but generally speaking in the mountains, we're in northern and southern Utah, we're anywhere from 12 inches to 36 inches more on the ground right now than what's typically on the ground this time of year. And in that snow, there's about 150% of normal water. Usually it takes about 10 inches to get of snow to get an inch of water. And these last storms, we've had about an inch of water in about five inches of snow. So that's great. I mean, if you're shoveling it, it's really heavy and not so good, but for the water, it's great. Uh, so that's a really good place to be. More snow, more water in the snow uh, than what is typically on the ground here for the end of February, 1st of March. Um, that all becomes moot if you turn everything off and we don't get any more storms in March and April because it just will average out, right? It, it uh, will become a normal year. Uh, we just don't see that happening. Looking long-term, it looks like the pattern will continue into the late winter, early spring. And that's exactly what we need to, to start a recovery that we hope will be multi-year. Uh, it's kind of funny, we need this kind of winter every winter for the next five years to actually start and get us out of the drought. Um, took years to get into it. It's going to take years to get out to it and out of it. And this is a great start, but we need to do this. We need to hit repeat on this winter and just keep get, getting these storms, getting this kind of pattern all the way through 24 and 25. Okay. You just brought all the excitement back to reality. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard. It's hard to do. Um, I don't know necessarily why this year it flipped, um, but it flipped and we, it was right when we needed it. Um, I think I told you before, we couldn't do we couldn't do 2023 the way we got through 2022 because we just don't have the same supply. But thanks to this winter, we're going to be okay. And uh, uh, I think a lot of people go, hey, now that we've got the water, things are good. The truth is, is that we need to take a look at droughts, water management, and everything else on a holistic point of view. Conservation is part of our future, period. It should have been part of our past in a bigger way. That's kind of what got us into the situation we are today. But it's unwise to try to think, oh, good, we can go back to our previous habits. <music> Truth is, we need to change our habits. We need to figure out a better way to move forward, not only in regards to existing properties and water rights, but how we allocate water in the future. Um, setting aside water to go to the Great Salt Lake, not letting the Great Salt Lake be an afterthought of whatever's left over after we've used all the water we want. Um, making sure that Lake Powell has a continuous inflow so that we can use it and fulfill our downstream obligations. Um, and I know there's a lot of groups that are working currently on that multi-state efforts to try to figure out some good policy around the Colorado River drainage. Um, but the truth is, is we're kind of at a new, a new crossroad for water in the West. Uh, it's always been the gold of the currency of the West. We've never treated it like that here in Utah because we're kind of the uh, the flower that blossomed in the desert. We just kind of think we have enough. But the truth is, is we really don't. And as the population has grown and the climate has changed, we kind of see the results of that. And so while we can't control what comes from heaven, we can definitely control what happens here on earth. And that's what we do. We've got to control how we use it, how we manage it, how we distribute it, and ultimately the kind of kind of attitudes we have towards it. You mentioned the Great Salt Lake. 
that's become sort of the the face of the drought. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but you know, we, we see that and we're like, okay, yeah, we got to do something. Um, this is going to help, but you're saying that we can just rely on good water years. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, Matt, you're exactly right. The past shows us that we cannot rely on good water years because we'll eventually and ultimately and inevitably have bad water. So it has to be management. It has to be conservation. It has to be intentional use of water and allocating the Great Salt Lake has a lot of issues. Number one, it's, it's, it's incredible. The fact that we have that salt lake in our valley is wonderful. Uh, the ecology that surrounds that lake is spectacular. The migratory birds, the shrimp, the brine, all of it, it's an industry in and of itself, and it's an ecology in and of itself that we can't let go. Then if you take away the water, now we've exposed a dry, dust, dusty lake bed that has all sorts of naturally occurring toxins that then get picked up in the air and get blown and have a health impact. So we're learning a whole lot about the Great Salt Lake and how much it helped this valley. And so it's kind of become a hot button topic for the drought or maybe a you know, a representation of what the drought is. But the truth is, is that lake really is tied directly to the economy, to the health and wellness of those in this valley. Uh, and it's a huge part of the overall state ecology. So we want to preserve it. We want to protect it. And that comes through um, very, very purposeful efforts. We are not going to save the Great Salt Lake by accident. Uh, that's going to be intentional and that's going to be uh, uh, important. And I think that we've got the ear of the legislature. We've got the ear because of senators going to Washington and advocating for funding to help. We've got the right people at the table. It's going to be, do we have enough resources to help infiltrate water into that lake? And that's going to be management and conservation, um, getting water rights to the lake and then making sure us as consumers don't waste the water so that there's enough to actually get to the lake. This is awesome. It's so, so good that we've got this winter. Um, you really couldn't ask for or draw up a better scenario to come out of a multi-year drought than to have this kind of winter. So be grateful, right? I mean, it's awesome. I know it's inconvenient. We drive in the snow. God, oh, this is terrible. Be grateful because the alternative is running out of water next summer, not being able to do anything outdoors water-wise and running the risk of losing the ability to provide water indoors to certain municipalities and people around the state. So uh, I guess gratitude is probably the one thing that I like to express because it's just awesome that we got a winter that we needed just at the right time. Um, and I hope that it's uh, that we don't get too lackadaisical and kind of go, oh, it's it good, it came and uh, kind of fall back into bad habits. I hope that we use it as kind of a turning point, a hinge point to say, we're going to manage our water better so that we can withstand things uh, a little better in the future. You can hear more from Kevin and his team of meteorologists during a special on KSL TV that's happening tomorrow, Friday, February 24th at 6.30 p.m. We've got stories, everything really from air quality to the ski industry to the drought to the Great Salt Lake and the impacts of water. Uh, kind of a comprehensive look at where we are and uh, how we got here and, and maybe come, what's coming next. That does it for us this week on KSL Plus. I'm Matt Rascone. I'll see you again next week. 